So hi and welcome to Avengers Assemble. I'm Jeremiah Hamilton. I'm Eli Parton. And we're gonna be talking about oh, Marvel Duh. Superheroes. First up on Avengers Assemble today, I would like for all of you guys that if you haven't already and watched other content from us, like and subscribe so that you can be notified every time we post a new video. Some of them are sports, but they're funny. And then there's like Eli and me when we talk sports, which is really like us talking movies in the middle of sports. Yeah, it always goes back to movies. We like movies. And we really like these movies. Speaking of these movies, are you ready for Avengers 4? I've, I've been ready since like the credits rolled on Avengers 3. Yep. That's when I was ready. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm glad they split into two movies, though. I'm not mad about the cliffhanger that everyone already knew was going to happen. What, sort of. What cliffhanger? Everybody died. It's the end. People freak out about that stuff. People that didn't know that it was going to happen. Alright, like... They, they just were immediately like, oh, God, I have to wait a year to find out what happens. It's like, you, you already know, like, three or four actors that are slated to be in other movies, so they're for sure coming back. Black Panther. Spider-Man. Uh, Doctor Strange. Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. And then all the ones that are still alive. That was the only thing I was surprised about, was well, Captain that's... America and Tony Stark not. That's who I think... It... All right, so... I want to do an over on your video eventually. What do we think? Like, which characters are gonna die in Avengers Four? But I don't okay. want to do that in this video. Okay, I was gonna if say, you guys I, I... comment down <laughs> below that you want to see that video after this. We greatly appreciate it. That'll let us know that we should do the video. Um, basically, how I feel about Avengers Four so far is that it could be the craziest Marvel movie yet. I agree. I it think it's gonna so much. They're going to bring in a lot of the... It's going to kind of go back to it being heavily influenced by the comics. Every, everything up to this point, obviously, has been influenced by the comics, but I think there's going to be a lot more concepts and, and different events from the comics in this last film. Just just from the third one being so... I, almost unaccessible to people, unless, unless you watched every single Marvel film, or you have at least a little bit of an understanding of some of the stuff that happens in the comics. Yeah, like the fact that the snap happens even before, like in the beginning of the comic, basically, too. So are we going to see kind of the continuation of that is the question that a lot of people have had, where eventually, um, what's the, man, I think you're drawing a blank on her name right now, but uh, Gamora's sister, Nebula. Nebula, she ends up stealing the gauntlet later on and then resetting everything. Well, actually, uh, the actress who plays her just was interviewed recently, and she was just talking about how surprised she is about her expanded role. She was, like, fully intended on just being, like, a side role, and that's what she felt like she was doing in the first Guardians. But I feel like that's kind of an indication of her being a more center, like, a center part of the uh, different characters. To be honest, in the first Guardians, her character might have had the most depth out of all the characters, too, because of she was tortured. She was dealing with the anger with Gamora. But I agree. She was also having to deal with betraying Thanos. There's so many details in that first Guardians movie that like kind of set up Avengers Infinity War, in my opinion. And then even sets up Thor a little bit to kind of get that mix in there. Too. Yeah, well, it, yeah, the Thor franchise was obviously heavily influenced by the success of Guardians and that formula. And that's why they changed his character so much. So there was rumors going on around Doctor Strange, and it's like a, a quarter of the but, like a third of the budget is being used for this shot, and it's him with a giant creature. So do you think that those are the Eternals, and we're gonna see some godlike creatures in this one, and possibly Thanos leaving his physical form because it's the kind of beat up at the end of Avengers three, and it kind of leads into where. Doctor Strange makes a deal with them because he's already seen the future of all of this. I think so. I think they're going to start bringing in some of those really odd, uh, like cosmic characters that only only like the hardcore comic book nerds would know about. Um, 
obviously the, the the whole the whole franchise and universe has been like leaning towards more of the cosmic adventures and less grounded on Earth. Uh, that's why I think Captain Marvel might be kind of like a nice little respite. Um, that's why I like Ant Man as well because it's kind of it brings it back home a little bit. Because I know going forward, Spider Man's going to be you know it's c- coming home or whatever it's called, and it's far from home. far from far home. From so home. it's going to be him going throughout the universe, um, and then Captain Marvel's character obviously is. There's a lot of. We'll get into some yeah. more details with that too, because I had some some theories with that one. Um, after watching the trailer, mm-hmm. I kind of have a spot on. I I watch Agents of Shield all the way through now, and watching that show gives you a lot more details on the Kree, which you I wasn't expecting to get in the show. Yeah, um, well, the Kree are obviously in Captain well, Marvel. By the way, if you guys haven't checked that show out, check it out on Netflix. There'll be a link down Things below like to download too. Netflix and do it. But seriously, like that show, five seasons, epic. Starts off slow, but it's kind of like the MCU in that instance, right? Like, Incredible Hulk wasn't that great. Maybe. I mean, it's barely in the MCU, like at all. Anyways, and, but... and the first Thor, <laughs> first two Thors, they're kind of like just teetering in. The like, I feel like they're on the cusp of falling out of the MCU because they were so bad. Yeah. Well, even if you go back and watch the the first two Iron Man movies, too. Iron Man movies, too. I like the first Iron Man. Well, I thought best. they were fantastic movies, but they feel so foreign from what we have now. It's it's kind of interesting to go back and look at where it started, especially since Disney hadn't taken over yet, and it was it, it's, it felt a lot more like the other superhero films from that time. Do you think that's why they were able to get Spider-Man from Sony? Well, that came down to the Amazing Spider-Man. The two films were made just to just to retain the license for Spider-Man because they had a deadline. They had to make a Spider-Man movie by that time, and they did. So they were successful in keeping their copyright of him, but it didn't do well critically or financially. So they they had no choice really. And you know, Disney, the, their background executive like deals are it's like mob mob, mob status in a way. Yeah. Watch them come after me now. Yeah. But you know the stuff going on. They're they're probably st- stiff arming the, Sony. You can't say the D word on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I mean it's just business. But you know they make good movies. It's not like I don't. I mean I literally watch every Disney movie. It's kind of bad, right. even though I I completely agree with South Park's whole spiel on them with the Jonas Brothers that old episode. You know I I don't really pay attention to what movies are Disney and what are anymore if it looks like the best movie out these days i'm mostly likely to go see it but since the mcu has gone all right i'll be honest i haven't seen like i want to say 70 percent of these movies in the theater only due to the fact that i'm a huge star wars fan shout out to the unknown regions podcast which will be up next week with some vader comments from the audience read by vader himself or lord hamilton Vader. I was going to say James Earl Jones is coming on the show. Yeah, I got him. I actually got Celebrity Voice Recorder on my phone. He's uh, taking a break from recording Lion King Le- to come on the show. Action. Oh, you mean Black Panther? <laughs> you mean Speaking Lion King? which, go check out that video, by the way. Black Panther, Lion King, here on the channel. Yeah. But, uh, Avengers 4 also leaked some set photos. I'm going to post them up for you guys to see. I'm going to show... Uh, Eli here, some of those photos. Those photos are, every time a photo goes up, people, so many theories. I, I tend to not look at them just because I, I I do think that way too. I'll start thinking about, oh, what does this mean? Like, what does this little thing mean? I don't. That's the crazy part. I just like looking at this stuff so I can see what the costume designs are going to look like. Yeah, that's like always that a really time. interesting thing, especially since you know half, half the costume is going to be CGI, so what you're looking at is going to be... Well, like, what is that, you know? Like, when you're looking at that right now... Well, it, it, yeah, it's the, saying, people are speculating that it's Ronin, um, which I think would be a little bit strange, isn't but... Isn't that Hawkeye at the same time, though? I Maybe. In the comics, he was the same character. They, they might, yeah, they might do... Go and down he, that and route. He's actually scroll, so do you think we might see that in Captain Marvel? Maybe there, there. I heard a theory that um, there's there's tons of people that are like, okay, the the whole Kree thing isn't going to be 
it's just going to be in Captain Marvel. It's going to be a part of that, and it's not going to go into the greater thing. But then there's other people that are speculating about, all right, who is one of the... Like, there could be people that have been in the series the entire time that, that are undercover. Kree, Scroll. And one of them that people say is Hawkeye. Because mm -hmm. he, he seems, like, too cool, too chill. Like, he's definitely a Kree. That's what they're saying. All right, so... What they said with Captain Marvel, too, is that she's susceptible to brainwashing, like in all the comics in the past, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about it that way, maybe it's aliens in general that are susceptible to blame brainwashing. Also, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., this is a, another side point, the GH-23 serum that they use to bring back Coulson, that is Kree blood. And he was susceptible to mind control afterwards because they wiped his memory and planted new memories. Well, I think I think that makes sense because the Kree are like they they've been like a slave race in the comic books. Before, like, yeah, yeah, whatever villain wants to take them over and use them as the their yeah. army, yeah, or they're infiltrating as spies or whatever. They're just yeah, they have susceptible minds. So anybody anybody that isn't super strong willed that's in the MCU could potentially be one. And Captain Marvel is considered half Kree because the genetic splicing that happens when she's created into Captain Marvel. Yeah. And, well, like I said, we'll get into more details as we're going on with I this. I think we'll probably, probably be good to post a, a Captain Marvel, like, only video. Oh, dude, we, we're going to have to go. Closer to release, though. Thinking. Well, we'll probably reiterate on some things again, too. Like, I'll probably end up doing just a go on a rant, tad tangent at some point here. And end up saying everything I want to say about Captain Marvel, and then we'll bring in a group of people to conversate about it more. Yeah, and I know. Or I'll ask the questions instead of give my points as much as, like, this video. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like they see a little war machine right there. It looks pretty cool. And, uh, there's Iron Man's new outfit. Captain America's new outfit, Thor. That kind of looks like the same outfit he had in Avengers Infinity War. Thanos back in armor again. Do you think we'll see Thanos in the past? Maybe. Because that would be pretty crazy. Yeah, they might... Because, like, in, in 3, it was all about showing him the past, but it wasn't it wasn't necessarily his backstory. It was more like Gamora's backstory. Mm-hmm. So they might have some flashback things just to kind of keep the theme of both movies similar, but this time more focus on Thanos' actual character in those instances. Especially since he's like, you know, meditating in that field or whatever at that little hut that he's in now. Well, I think he's just going there to be a farmer, like in the comics is what uh, the Russo brothers were saying. They even have his armor like on the scarecrow off to the side at that last shot. You know, I, I could see him... Yeah, I mean, he's a farmer because obviously he's he's very interested in agriculture because he did solve world hunger on Earth as well as overpopulation and on, the entire, on a galactic level Yeah, in a really messed up way, but, you know. Well, if him and Trump hung out, they'd probably be best friends, too, but that's besides the point. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I won't. <laughs> that's pretty I'll try not to get into that. There's obviously, you can make some jokes about hand size when it comes to both those two men, but... <laughs> One's a lot smaller than the other. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I, that might ruin the relationship there. They might they might agree with each other, but then someone's going to ruin it. Someone's going to be like, you know, he's going to shake his hand, and then they're going to be just like awkwardly sit, sitting there like, I don't like you anymore. Oh. I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so, moving on to Captain Marvel... Actually, some new news with that. They're saying that... Alright, so the, the title here, Eli, for you, Box Office. And this is from Forbes, by the way. Captain Marvel is being set up to fail? Question. Do you think it's being set up to fail? Depends on the definition of fail. Do you mean like critically, financially... It seems like it's Forbes, so they're probably ringing up the financial... Yeah, well, 2019 is a pretty stacked year for movies. Um, I think a, a lot of people have been wanting, have been waiting for a Captain Marvel movie. So I'd say probably about 25% of the revenue is going to come from people that are legitimate Captain Marvel fans. 
and probably about 50% of the revenue is going to come from people that are just really interested in the MCU and just want a little taste. Because that's what I felt like. I, I, I was in the camp of I absolutely wanted a Black Panther movie. I was ready for it. I was super excited to see that movie. Um, but then in retrospect, I was like, wow, that really was like a good setup for Infinity War. So mm -hmm. um, I feel like Captain Marvel is going to be like the Black Panther this year. And I'm not talking about on like a, a social justice level or anything like that. Um, I, that was I, I just mean on like a, a pure MCU you know, setup kind of level. It's one sentence in Black Panther that makes it social justice though. Everything else besides that really isn't. It's just a story about a superhero representing his people who he feels like they've been betrayed. If it was any other ethnicity, I don't think anybody would have really thought about a social justice thing. If it was a white group and they were like, oh, well, they know, let's free all the other white people from there. Wait a minute, that already happened in the movie. It's called the prequels. Yeah, I think that's probably the most unique thing about that movie because obviously the, the basic plot lines and the story is very similar to Hamlet or Lion King. Um, but the most unique part of that movie is just them dealing with uh, them having a lot of power and being able to help Af like African descendants around the world and, and not doing that. But on a greater level, just not being a reclusive country and keeping themselves held back when even outside of just African descendants being subjugated around the world, also just the world being threatened by like Thanos yeah. and like... <laughs> that's like the big one. It's yeah. like Thanos just showing up. So I, I think that's the most unique theme of that movie. And that's, that's why I, I enjoyed it, outside of it being, you know, just another rehash of the it, Hamlet story. It did a really good job, though, in theaters, too, and, and it wasn't a bad, like, go watch the video, I'll explain more, and get the details, thank you, you like talking about that topic, because I can't anymore, I've already done a video about it.